السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا مولانا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه من ولاه أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين وبعد Inshallah Ta'ala, before we start our tafsir part in our Qur'an Halaqa tonight, I would like to encourage you, Inshallah, to donate generously for the masjid in Musjo. And I think that you remember the hadith that I mentioned uh, last night, yesterday, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, سَبَقَ دِرْهَمٌ مِئَةَ أَلْفِ دِرْهَمٌ That one dirham is better than 100,000 dirhams in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he was asked, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how is this possible? Qala alayhi wa salatu wa salam, a man who has only two dirhams, two dollars, and he donated one of them for Allah's sake. It means he has given half of his wealth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other person, he has a lot of money, he is so wealthy, and he took from his wealth a lot of money, only 100,000 dirhams, and he gave them for Allah's sake. So the first person is better in, in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he has given the percentage that he has given for Allah's sake is better than the other person. He literally gave half of his wealth. So I'm not encouraging you actually to give half of your wealth or anything. I'm just saying that the reward will be multiplied multiplied by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala based on the circumstances that we live in. And now we need to build a masjid. So there is a need for this. So inshallah the reward is going to be multiplied for you if you donate uh, generously. Brother Muhammad Zubik is waiting downstairs for your donations inshallah ta'ala. And as for our Quran lesson today. It is the last Qur'an lesson in Surah Al-Ma'arij. The last halaqa, insha'Allah ta'ala. And I have summarized the ayat that we're going to recite tonight in some points. The first point that we have, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speak about the reaction of the disbelievers when they used to hear Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reciting the Qur'an? And I would like for you, inshallah, to listen to this description. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is describing the scene, how the disbelievers react when he gives a speech, as And I would like for you to imagine yourself in that situation, under such circumstances, giving a speech, and people are reacting that way. It's very difficult, actually, on him, alayhi salatu wasalam. قال تعالى فما للذين كفروا قبلك مهطعين عن اليمين وعن الشمال عزين. Let's go first and understand the Arabic words that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala described them with some Arabic words. He said number one they are مهطعين فما للذين كفروا قبلك مهطعين. And the word مهطعين comes from an إهطاع. What is an إهطاع? An إهطاع is when somebody walks fast and he, while he's walking, he's looking at something and he's staring at that thing. He never looks to any other side. وَيَمُدُّ عُنُقَهُ He longs his, he longs to see that thing. Like he's going to grab something, he's looking at it and he's walking fast towards it. That's how the disbelievers used to react when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recites the Quran. And then he says subhanahu wa ta'ala, عزين عن اليمين وعن الشمال عزين. Word عزين is the plural form of the word عزه. And عزه means jama'a or group. It means they come closer to you, staring at you. They walk fast, ya Muhammad. And then they sit down around you, they surround you in groups. They don't sit down together. They sit down in groups. عزين عن اليمين وعن الشمال In your right side, in your left side, in front of you and behind behind you, ya Muhammad. 
And actually the word izin is also mentioned in one of the ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Just from the language perspective, I would like to reflect on the, this word, the word izin. In Sahih Muslim, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came into the masjid and he found the Sahaba sitting in groups. Then he said to them, why mali arakum izin? Why are you sitting izin? Izin means in groups like this. أَلَا تَصُفُّونَ كَمَا تَصُفُّ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Why don't you stand up in lions and rows like the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stand up in the heavens? قَالُوا كَيْفَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ How can we act like the angels? He said, يُتِمُّونَ الصَّفَّ الْأَوَّلُ وَيَتَرَسُّونَ فِي الصَّفِّ They complete the first line and they stand up in rows. They arrange themselves. So the word izin is mentioned in this hadith and mentioned in this ayah and it means groups. And this is the reaction. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, so what is the matter? What is the matter with those who disbelieve hastening from before you, ya Muhammad, and from your right and from your left? And then after all of this, you go to him fast and you know, when you give a speech, somebody comes to you and he's hastening towards you, he walks fast. And he's staring at you, you think that he's going to listen attentively. And he cares about what you're saying. Immediately after this, they start to deny what he's saying. And to make fun of him and his sahaba. And that's why this ayah was revealed. So Allah is saying to him, why? What's the matter with them? Why are they doing this? Why do you know that you are a sadiq al-ameen? You are the truthful and the trustworthy. So this is the first scene that we have in the ayat, in the end of Surah Al-Ma'arij. The second scene that we have. No one deserves the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without acting. Ayatuma'u qala Allah, ayatuma'u kullu mri'in minhum, ayyu dukhala jannata na'im. Does every one of them aspire and he wishes to be in the Jannah? And then he says, Kalla, inna khalaqunahum mimma ya'lamu. No. They will never be admitted to the Jannah without acting, without doing good deeds. We have created them from what they know. And he didn't mention that. He didn't mention it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have created them from what they know. And every human being knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created him from a discharge that comes out from the men and from the women. So he wants subhanahu wa ta'ala because they were very arrogant after coming towards Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, denying what he is saying, making fun of him. They claim that they deserve the Jannah even before the Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And that's why the ayat was revealed. They are saying, you shouldn't be that arrogant. You shouldn't think that, that you can make it to the Jannah easily like this. It's actually so difficult. And look at yourself, you know from what we have created you. And he didn't mention it subhanahu wa ta'ala like it. there is no need to mention what we what you have created what you've been created from. He is humiliating them. He is humiliating the disbelievers, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in this way, even without saying the name of the thing that we were created from or the disbelievers were created from. So like he's saying, you were created, you know my condition to go to my Jannah, you have to work. That's exactly what he's saying. And then he goes farther to make a comparison between him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, himself and the disbelievers. After he talked about the disbelievers, he started to compare them to himself. فَلَا أُقُسِمُ بِرَبِّ الْمَشَارِقِ وَالْمَغَارِبِ إِنَّا لَقَادِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنْ نُبَدِّلَ خَيْرًا مِّنْهُمْ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُقِينَ Like he said to them, actually you need to know the disbelievers. You need to know who are you dealing with. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're dealing with, you were created from that thing that I didn't mention and you know of it. You deal with the master of al-mashariq wal-magharib. Al-mashariq wal-magharib, the risings and the settings of the sun. 
In some places in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes himself as Rabbul Mashriq wal Maghrib. The master of the sunrise and the sunset. And in Surah Al Rahman, he described himself as Rabbul Mashriqain wa Rabbul Maghribain. The master of the two sunrises and the two sunsets. And in this ayah, he is saying Rabbul Mashariq wal Maghrib. The master of the multiple, multiple sunrises and the multiple sunsets. And some Muslims, when they look at these three ayat, they might say there is contradiction between the ayat of the Quran. Why sometimes he speaks about the sun as one mashriq and one maghrib, one sunrise and one sunset. And then sometimes he, mention, he mentions two, sometimes he mentions some, a lot of them. The scholars say when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions al-mashriq wal-maghrib hadha bi'atibar al-asl Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala khalaqa he has created only one son and this son does one action every single day or two actions two actions to rise and to set so that's why he said from this side from this perspective that he is the master of the one sunrise and the one sunset the whole world is two parts Sunrise and sunset. In the other ayah, he was addressing Ma'ashar al jinn wal ins. He was talking in Surah Al Rahman and addressing al jinn and al ins. And that's why it's suitable for them to mention two sunrises and two sunsets. He meant subhanahu wa ta'ala, La yakulu ishraq fil kawm illa wa yuajihu ghurub. If we have sunrise in Canada here, we would have the sunset in Egypt, for example. We would have sunset in Jordan. The sunrise in Syria and in America, the sunset. And that's why he's saying, he's comparing two places in the world. Whenever we have sunrise, we must have sunset. But Rabbul Mashariq wal Maghrib is talking about the whole world. The sunset now in Canada, not only in Canada, it's also in some other place in the world. And we have some other multiple places in the world that has sunrise now at the same time. Like the same idea of the Adhan. Same idea of the Adhan. The Adhan, because we have sunrise and sunset all over the world, the Adhan goes all over the world all the time. That's why the word Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, is going on all over the world in one, in some spot in the world. Now, now you were sitting here, we're giving a halaqa, there is somebody now who is making adhan. When you go back to your house, there is somebody there is making adhan al maghrib. And the adhan never stops from the whole universe. That's why he says, Rabbul Mashariq wal Maghrib, the master of the sittings and the risings. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope it's clear. We have different uh, explanations of this ayah. But we should go with this explanation. It's the easiest of them. One time he is talking about the two actions that the sun do. The other time he is talking to the jinn and the ins. He mentioned two places from among the world that he owns. Number three, he is talking about the whole world and the multiple places in the world that has different settings and risings. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا أُقْسِقْ Why he is swearing by himself? إِنَّا لَقَادِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَن نُبَدِّلَ خَيْرًا مِّنْهُمْ وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُقِينَ We have the power to replace you, disbelievers, with people who are better than you. وَمَا نَحْنُ بِمَسْبُقِينَ It's not something difficult for us. And we have some other places in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions ayat similar to this. قال الله تعالى يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ أَنْتُمُ الْفُقَرَاءُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدُ O mankind, you are those in need of Allah and Allah is the free of need, al-ghani is the free of need al-hamid, the praiseworthy إِنْ يَشَأْ يُذْهِبْكُمْ وَيَأْتِ بِخَلْقٍ جَلِيدٍ If he wills, he would replace all of you Remove you from the earth, the surface of the earth, and bring some other people. وَمَا ذَلِكَ عَلَى اللَّهِ بِعَزِيزِ And it is not something difficult for him to do, subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
He's addressing now whom? The disbelievers. Again, he's still addressing the disbelievers. Last point that we have here. Leave them until the day, the last day comes. فَذَرْهُمْ يَخُوضُوا وَيَلْعَبُوا حَتَّى يُلَاقُوا يَوْمَهُمُ الَّذِي يُوْعَدُوا Allah is saying to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad, leave them, yahudu wa yal'abu. And khawd is to speak about something that's unuseful. To have a conversation that's unuseful. Useful. It's called khawd. Wa yal'abu is to do something which is unuseful. So he's saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, let them Muhammad react in whatever way they want when you give da'wah and when you recite Quran when you give your speeches let them practice khawd and la'ib hatta yulaqu yawmahum alladhi yu'adu until the last day comes and then he ended the surah with the same concept that he started the surah with the first ayah in the surah sa'ala sa'ilun bi'adhab al-waqi' lal-kafirin laysa lahu da'fa' He is speaking about the day of resurrection. And the last ayat in the surah also, he is addressing the same issue. And he is describing the disbelievers when they arise from their graves to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So again, the day of judgment again, he said, they will come out. They will emerge from their graves. Sara'an. Rapidly. They will hasten towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ka'annahum ila nusubin yufidun. He is saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, describe it here. The day of, in the dunya, they used to have nusub. Nusub means idols erected. They used to go hasten towards their idols to worship them or to touch them to have barakah from the idols. They think if they touch the idols, they will be blessed. They will be blessed with this. So they used to hasten towards them. The day of Qiyamah also they were. They will emerge from their graves, hastening towards the caller of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the day of judgment. Then the description continues. Their eyes will be humbled. Tarhaquhum dhillah, humiliation will cover them. He's talking about the disbelievers. Humiliation will, will cover them. That is the day that they were promised. So we have here some ideas tonight in this halaqa. The last idea that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ended the surah with is the same idea that he started the surah with, which is the day of qiyamah is coming. So be prepared for it. Jazakumullah khayran and we will have our presentation part now. Wa aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah al-azim li wa lakum. Subhanakallahumma bihamdika ashadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaykum. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.